See, a lot of people don't know the bread and butter of insurance is it only pays out if you expire or pass away within the timeline that you have it. And as we all know, term is the cheapest insurance out there, but it's also renting insurance. If you don't pass away within the timeline you have it, Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Entrepreneurship Exposed. What is good, everybody? I hope everyone's having a great day. It's a, a beautiful Wednesday, I think. <laughs> That's a, the problem of an entrepreneur. We don't know the days, right? But right. Uh, we, we are back again, and we are going to have an amazing conversation with a good friend of mine today. All right now, this guy, it, it's, it's ironic, before, before I introduce <laughs> me, it's ironic because at one point, um, I, I knew of the topic that he spoke about, but I was like, ah, oh, man, I'm not gonna worry about it. Then he knew of the topic I spoke about. He was like, ah, oh, yeah, that's not for me. Now, <laughs> we come together and he's in, he's in my uh, mentorship, learning how to acquire businesses, because he used to think that acquiring a business is gonna buy himself a job. And then he realized, oh, wait a minute, it doesn't. So his mind was blown once he saw what we talk about. And it's yeah. the same thing on the reverse for me because I was like, oh, well, I'm already doing um, self-directed uh, IRA. I'm already doing this. I'm already doing that. I don't need the infinite banking also. And then in the last year, my mind has completely changed on that. I realized the true power of it. So today we are going to expose the the industry of, of insurance, in particular, infinite banking, with my guy, Hassani Houston. Hassani, welcome, bro. How you doing? What's going on, brother? Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. And you're oh, absolutely man. right. <laughs> Is that right? You know, I just thought of that right now. I just thought of yeah. like, you know what? It's, it was always kind of the same thing, back and forth with our different topics. And um, I think that's also another reason why we resonate well, because we're talking about things that people tend to, uh, at least in certain communities, tend to overlook. That way. They, yep. they feel like, oh, that's not for me. They, I can't do that, right? So, yep. and, and we completely underestimate the power of insurance, all right? 100%. Now, now I saw, I, I'm going to start off by, there's a meme or, a, no, it wasn't a meme. It was like a video that I saw on, I think it was on Instagram. And it says something where the guy was like, um, if every person of color was to get like a huge, life insurance policy, then I bet you the uh, Kills will go police down. killings and things like yeah. that would almost go away. Not because, not just because the police don't want to pay out anything or just because of, you know, anything like that, but only because the power the insurance companies have Correct. to lobby, to stop certain things, to make um, true reform and true change. Right? Correct. So what's your thoughts on that? Um, so, so I do think that, so I do think people underestimate the ability of insurance companies to lobby, um, and to put financial backing behind things. Uh, and that is what he was talking about in reference to that. It, it, it wouldn't be out of the goodness of their heart. It'll be, it's a business interest because if you think about it, traditionally speaking, when it comes to insurance, car insurance, but, but I work on the life insurance side. So let me talk to you about terms specifically. Mm. 2% of term policies actually pay out. That means out of a hundred, out of a hundred policies, only two people die and the insurance company has to pay them. So mm. that means they're receiving 98% of the money and never have to pay anything back on it. So if you mess up their numbers and just go up to five or 10%, not 25, just five or 10 that's gonna cause a that's gonna cause a stir where they're gonna tell some people, hey, we need to make sure we change some laws so we can protect our interests. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people don't know the bread and butter of insurance is it only pays out if you expire or pass away within the timeline that you have it. And as we all know, term is the cheapest insurance out there, but it's also renting insurance. If you don't pass away within the timeline you have it, then the company doesn't have to do anything, but they get all that money. Mm. Multiply mu multiply hundred dollars by three hundred million people, right? Mm. That that's what you're looking into. Now they said only sixty percent of the population has insurance, 
So even if we want to say 300 million times 100 uh, times 60 percent, whatever that number might be, if we're thinking about it from that perspective, that's how much money the industry is making on a consistent basis from term alone. All right, guys, before we get into the full episode of Entrepreneurship Exposed, I just want to take a moment to thank you all for supporting this channel. This channel means so much to me. You all mean so much to me because this information is the type of things that I wish that I knew when I was like 17 years old. Right? We're talking about wealth creation strategies, not plays. Never talking about, hey, we can run this quick play to make some quick money. This is all about sustainable strategies that won't go anywhere. Whatever else you may be doing, this information will supplement it and help you take it to a whole nother level. So what I would like, love to ask each and every one of you is if you could like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, do all of that for me. It supports the channel, it helps us to grow, helps us to get this information out to more people so that we could change more lives. So thank you again for supporting. Make sure that whatever you see in here, whatever you learn in here, that you go and execute on it. And then drop a comment and let me know how it went out for you. Hopefully I'll even see you in the BBI where I teach how to acquire businesses and everything about entrepreneurship. Let's go. Ooh, okay, okay. Now, here's a funny thing, right? That's interesting when you think of the numbers. Now, I remember, so I'm, you know, this is an entrepreneurship uh, podcast. And I remember one of my first companies I tried to start after coming out of college. Yeah. And I can't even remember what the name is right now because I didn't get too far th through the business plan and uh, getting uh, funding for it. I didn't know the power of credit then. I thought yeah. the only way to start a business was to either have angel investors or and or go through the VC cash. capital route or, um, or to create a super in-depth business plan and then take it to the banks for SBA loan. You know, now right. I know better that there's other ways to start a business. However, right. this one, my intention if I remember correctly, it may have been Chris Rock who made a joke saying that insurance is like just in case or something yeah. like that. Right? That's and, really what it is. And then he said, well, if if nothing happens and I don't get in an accident, shouldn't I just get my money back too or something like that? And I remember saying, why isn't it like that? So I, my whole business model was, okay, we're going to create a, a, an insurance company that we give the money back at the end of the year if you don't get you know don't have any claims or anything like that right and i thought that that was a great thing to do and then i had a, a bunch of other um uh you know programs and solutions within it that was planned as as uh you know as products and services to actually sell but i found it extremely difficult to break into that industry now it could be yes. because i was really new really newbie you know <laughs> coming out of college and it's not delusions of grandeur. It's just that, you know, I didn't know how to execute on things. But do you feel like the insurance industry is kind of like a little mafia where you can't get into it and then they pretty much got a stranglehold on your life because, hey, we going to, you, you pay us nonstop and nothing happened. We still collecting money. All right. So yeah. what do you think about the industry overall? So, so if we're speaking of it from a perspective where you want to come in and be B's insurance, where you are actually an insurance company offering life insurance to clients, mm -hmm. not as a salesperson, but as an insurance company, then mm -hmm. yes, you're looking at, you're looking at competition in that sense, because what happened is, is back in the, um, back in the day before the seventies, you had insurance. So Prudential, for example, mm -hmm. uh, Prudential had big products and then Prudential had Prudential agents. New York life had big products and New York life agents. And mm -hmm. after a while, if you looked at all the numbers, there were like a there was like a big five or something like that. I don't remember the exact number off the top of my head. So if you wanted to get in, they'd give you a piece of like the the small market cap of let's say five ten percent, but you couldn't get in their market cap. They're blocking mm -hmm. that out to the point where they had relations with the Department of Insurance. They have relations with the uh, heads of state. They have so all the relations tied all the way up to D.C. Right. Uh, and, and one of the things that happened is if you look at the history of a, of a man by the name of A.L. Williams and the way he came into business and started uh, uh, basically selling, he, he, he's the one who started the concept sell term by the difference or he made it popular. Let me say that he didn't start it. He made it popular. Mm -hmm. If you look at his story, what the insurance companies were doing against him at that time, that lets you know how the industry was. The industry was definitely mafia like absolutely mm -hmm. without a doubt. Without okay, a doubt. Okay. So it's interesting that because this country is not a country, the country is a, a corporation. 
right? So, you know, every, everything benefits the corporations in different ways, right? Now, mm -hmm. so, okay, we know insurance is something that people neglect. People only think of insurance as two things. Hey, my death benefit uh, insurance and yeah. my health insurance that I get from my company that I'm working for or something like that, right? Yes, now, yes, yes. Now, we, we, uh, I've learned that it's way more than that. And one of the yes. examples that I love to give is if you take the richest CEOs of the biggest companies in the world, they, they you know, some of them take like a $1 salary. Yep. And then they have a huge insurance policy. Yep. And most people don't realize why that is. Can you shed some yep. light on yep. that before we get into what infinite banking actually is? Absolutely. So one of the places you guys can go to so that you don't have to just take my word for it is uh, Fortune 500 companies are public companies. So the information is public. What that means is you can look up how much an executive is getting compensated. You can look up their salary. You can look up their bonuses, all that stuff. All you have to do is go to Google and type in um, whatever company you want, proxy statement. So GE proxy statement uh, 2020. Uh, Disney proxy statement and then it gives you a full report of everything that you're looking at so then you can go look at the the executives and one of the things that they're doing is so everything is about taxes and and tax management in other words which income gets taxed the highest well that's your w-2 income mm -hmm. your earned income earned income so, so if I could find a way to defer my earn, or, or minimize my earned income and get more on the capital gain side through bonuses and SEC bonuses and all those type of things. So now if I'm getting that kind of stuff, well now my taxes are, are lower than what I would have paid uh, if I took all that in my wages, that's one. Then two, when we're talking about putting that money in insurance, um, there's a term called COLI, C-O-L-I, COLI, stands for Corporate Owned Life Insurance. Mm. What you're able to do is you're able to put your money inside of an insurance plan at large at large premiums, and then you can just borrow against it. And so now you're sheltering your money inside the account. It can grow tax-free, but then when you want to pull that money out, you can pull it out tax-free. So again, it's all about tax management. How could I minimize my tax exposure when I'm receiving higher income? So when you start seeing executive, they, you know, they're, they're doing strategies like that. It's not, that's not the only strategy, but that's one of the strategies. Mm, there we go. So you already yeah, started yeah. to touch into the, the the main benefit of infinite banking, right? And yes. that they're able to borrow against their life insurance policy. And yes. In, in particular, why would they even do that? It's because, oh, it's not taxed following Correct. certain rules, right? Correct. So explain to the people, break it down. And you've done this as best as I've seen in the industry in terms of breaking down what infinite banking really is because I had heard about it for uh, at least a year before I met you and mm -hmm. I, it, as people broke it down to me I just never really got it it never really you know hit so Stuck, yeah break it down for everybody what is infinite banking overall yes yes thank you thank you so first off I appreciate that compliment that means a lot right uh because I strive to make things simple uh, the best way I can say this for everybody is think of it this way. Um, we want to put ourselves in a position where we're no longer the customer of the bank. We are the bank. That's the first thing you want to do, because if you don't have that mindset to go with it, then there's no way you're going to execute properly. And and uh, uh, I can relate that to if you if you start associating with bees more, if you guys were a part of his broke program. Uh, one of the things he talks about is you got to start learning how to think like an investor with the uh, ESBI chart or the cash flow quadrant. You can't think like an employee and a self-employed person. You got to start thinking like an investor first and then learn how to work over your business, not on your business. That's a whole nother <laughs> program. But y'all got to be a part of his mentorship to understand that. But here's my point. My point is when you start thinking that you are the bank then your perception changes because now, because we come into the bank as a customer, so we act different. But if you are the bank, here's what we know. When you give the bank money, a lot of us think it's a liability to, or, or a lot of us think it's an asset to the bank. That's not true. Robert Kiyosaki taught us that assets add money to your pocket and, and liabilities take money from your pocket. If we put money inside the bank, we, they got to pay us interest. So the bank is in charge of flipping that money and turning their liabilities into assets. So now I said all that, let me get to the answer. 
What is infinite banking? Infinite banking is our ability to leverage life insurance companies so that we can spend the same dollar twice. Again, infinite banking is our ability to leverage life insurance companies so we can earn interest on the same dollar twice or spend the same dollar twice. That's all we're doing. That's all we're doing. And so then, of course, concept. Tell how that works. It's That's a concept, not a product. Hundred percent. If you call a company up and say, hey, I want one of those infinite banks, they're going to laugh you off the phone because it's not a product. Mm -hmm. It's a concept that you execute through life insurance. Mm -hmm. And it would not be term life insurance. You No, you can't do it with uh, term life insurance. It has to be a form of a permanent life insurance because permanent life insurance has a savings account attached to it. The reason why that's important is because with infinite banking, there's two cardinal, there's two cardinal rules. Um, number one, you cannot lose your money in the account. Uh, so in other words, you have to have some kind of savings with your account. Mm -hmm. Term doesn't have savings with it. You're just renting the insurance. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is with that savings, it has to get a competitive rate of return where you're at least outpacing inflation. So if that's if you don't do those two things, you can't mm -hmm. call it infinite banking, even if you're trying to use other other vehicle to do it. Ooh, now you're speaking spicy because infl inflation is what, like 9% now or something? Yeah, it's, it's, it's up there. It's up there ridiculous, right? We so know it's over seven for sure. Over seven. So infinite banking, if structured properly, does it adjust over time? If Because inflation wasn't at 9% before. So is it then uh, is it dynamic and adjusts and uh, it outpaces inflation overall? Great question. Um, Generally speaking, the answer would be yes if you're setting it up properly. So what I mean by that is traditionally speaking, when you hear people talk about infinite banking, they're going to connect you with they're going to automatically identify that with uh, whole life uh, because of a gentleman by the name of Nelson Nash who came out with the book Becoming Your Own Banker, uh, uh, I believe. But but basically what that is, is you're putting your money inside of a whole life policy. Uh, you're going to get a guaranteed interest rate out of the foundation. Let's say it's three, four percent. And then you're going to get paid dividends behind that, which could be another three to four percent. Now, if we do the math on that, that's seven, eight percent at mm -hmm. best. And so let, let's just round up and say 10 percent at best. I, I've been ruffling some feathers. I've been going against the grain of the traditionalist and I've been showing people how to utilize infinite banking with index universal life. The reason why I do that is because conceptually whole life and index universal life are cousins. Right. Mm -hmm. So in theory, they work the same with the uh, um, the tax codes. Your money can grow tax free. You can pull it out tax free and uh, you can pass it on tax free. All that's the same. The difference is the savings is now is tied to the S&P 500. So mm -hmm. when it's tied to the S&P 500, when the market goes up, you earn money. But when the market drops, remember, we said we have to make sure our, our money's protected. We cannot lose money in the account if we're gonna be utilizing infinite banking. So with index universal life, guess what? You have insurance on your money. So basically when the market goes up, you earn with the market, but when the market falls, your account's gonna lock in that value, guaranteed don't lose a dime, and then when the market goes back up, you earn with the market again. So oh. in, in short, what happens is you have the ability to get the market returns in your account, which means it's dynamic and it, it will adjust. Now, now, you know, I know the answers to some of these questions because you and I have spoken before, but I did yeah, not know yeah, that. Yeah, and, and I love that. Oh. I just learned something. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. that's what's up. That is, that is real spicy. That's a, that's something that everybody needs to pay attention to because, yes, indeed. you know, uh, there's not many things out there that can outpace inflation and protect you when things drop. That, that, that's it. really interesting. That's really interesting. Well, um, well, let me give this to you. Let me give this to you just real quick. When we say you are now the bank, one of the things that we have to pay, I, I mean that for real. So let's let's put it to you like this. The bank, don't they insure their money? Yes. That's, that's the insurance. Yes. Right? The problem is, is it's only insured up to a quarter million dollars. So we're skipping the bank. We're not going to the bank. We're going to go directly to the insurance companies and get insured dollar for dollar. At worst case, some companies Ooh. will insure you 80%. So now with that being said, if your money's insured, as if you're the bank, now when you're taking these market returns, but uh, based off market performance, you're not taking either risk or the, or the losses. Oh man, bro. You know, and you've said that many times too before. You said, uh, you are the bank. And I say it too, I tell people, you are the yeah. bank. But I yeah. never really, really 
thought about what that means <laughs> like, because right yes, you're insuring your money oh that's that's awesome this is awesome i love this man this is yes. important things for people to understand now yes. i want to give a, a little model because this helped me to understand it uh the best when you first explained it to me uh and i think it'll help our listeners for this so in in infinite banking the way that it's structured and you correct me if i'm wrong at any point of course Asani, um gotcha. you have one side that is the money that you're putting in that is earning interest mm -hmm. and if you take money out borrow against your own bank that money that's still in there keeps earning the interest as if the as if the money was not taken out as long as you follow certain rules yep. right so yep. that's one channel of of infinite banking is the money you're putting in it's growing with interest and you, depending on how you have it set up you only have to be putting money in for a certain period of time let's say maybe 10 years but then it keeps growing after that right correct correct the other side is the death benefit the part that most people think of when they think of life insurance right correct. it's the death benefit you pass you have a specific level of a, a, a benefit that's paid out that also continues growing or is it just getting to one level and it stops and only one channel grows good question so that's only dependent on how you set it up um so you'll hear this in the in the uh <laughs> you'll hear this in the buy term invested difference community because i use that as a scare tactic um what happens is is there's two ways that you can set up your death benefit you can set set up where it's stagnant where it's just one level and that's it mm -hmm. now what's the cost of you doing or what's the benefit of that if you put in so think of the death benefit because because see we cannot think of this the traditional way we think of life insurance traditional way of thinking of life insurance i want to put in the least amount of money for the biggest death benefit possible mm -hmm. uh so that i'm good with infinite banking the, the thinking is literally the exact opposite we're trying to put in as much money we're trying to put in as much money and with as little death benefit as possible so with with that being mentioned what happens is uh i tell people think of death benefit like your water bottle right if i have if i have a 32 ounce water bottle i could not put I cannot put um, a 32 ounce water bottle, I cannot put 64 ounces in or else the water's gonna spill over. In this example, any water that spills over, now the IRS can tax it. As long as I keep enough water inside the water bottle and it never spills over, the IRS can't touch it. That's the, that's the rule. So, what, so, so when you set it up and you say, well, sorry, I could put a million dollars in here. Then we can set it up up front where we say, okay, we're gonna get a death benefit worth 2 million so that it's big enough to hold your million dollars of cash. Mm -hmm. and then it stays stagnant right the reason why that's important if we keep it at two million then the death benefit will never go up now we control the cost so that's a benefit mm -hmm. the, the problem with that is that people will talk about and this is a trade-off when you pass away if you have a million dollars cash and two million dollars death benefit when you pass away your family only gets the two million they don't get the cash value and the death benefit okay oh. yeah so that's what happens if it's level if it's increasing, we could say, okay, you're, you're going to put in a million and you have $2 million of, of insurance, but we're going to let it increase year to year. So now it can grow to 2.5 million, whatever the case may be. At that point, if you were to pass away, your family would get the death benefit and your cash value. They get both. Okay. Okay. So I got to make a quick correction since my team is in the background and they're, you know, adding uh, uh, captions up. And uh, for all the watchers of, of this video later on, they put up debt, debt like like debt, like when you go into debt. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah not yeah. debt, it's death benefit. Yeah, so life like benefit. you're dying. Yeah, when you die. So just just want to make that correction for all the viewers later on. Um, yes. But but this is awesome. This is this is. I don't think. <laughs> It's amazing how many people don't know this, right? It's amazing right. how it, how many people have a, a regular old life insurance policy and never even read the details of the policy. And their contract, they, you're they, right. Exactly, they set it up and then they just kind of forget about it. And even if you did read it in the beginning, sometimes you need to go back and check things later on. You know, you've, you've had your, you've been paying your life insurance policy for a few years and you just think, oh, it's just already set, everything's good to go. No, there might be something that else that happened that triggered by something or whatever and you have to pay attention to what's going on because it's 100%. the worst feeling to want it, to use it, and then realize that, oh, there's something, a, a roadblock in your way at that moment because you need it then. You know what? So in reference to that, I gotta say this. 
um, there's been people that's told me they had life insurance and they didn't. They had accidental insurance. That is mm, not the same thing. That's like Aflac and those type of things, right? Right. So, mm. so what happens is, is accidental insurance is you. There's a special condition that you have to die a certain way for them to yeah. pay out. You mm. know, like let's say I'm a construction worker. I have to die on the job, and it has to be from a piece of metal hitting me. But if I slip and fall down a down a hole, then the, the policy doesn't pay out. Right. Mm. I, I'm exaggerating the conditions right now, but that's the example. Um, mm -hmm. And the mistake that I've seen people make is, oh, I have a million dollars. I'm covered. Read your contract. What does it say? Yeah. And it'll tell you accidental insurance paid on the condition of. And that's it. Ooh. It will not pay out any other way. Mm. So we do have a question in the audience. Uh, can you adjust that amount, the size of the water bottle at any time or only at the beginning during establishment? Good question. Um, so the short answer is yes, you can adjust it at any time uh, uh, because, but generally it's once a year where you have your anniversary where you can say, okay, uh, I want to change it to increase. So we've done that for clients before where we start out level for the control of the cost and then we change to increasing because they're going to make more money on the back end later. Or we we change it to, uh, well, yeah, yeah. So yes, to answer the question, yes. You yes, 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 got you, got you. So shifting slightly now. So we know that we need to have insurance. We also know that you could create wealth from uh, uh, structuring your insurance in a way that is going to uh, uh, let you get to infinite banking, right? Correct. But as an entrepreneur, we always got to take it back to entrepreneurship, right? Yes, as yes, an yes. entrepreneur, getting into the space of creating policies for people, uh, what, are, what are the opportunities for, well, actually, we might as well, it's, it may be time right it. now that we Let's go into it. our pop segment, right? Let's we got to pop. It is time to pop the infinite banking and insurance game. So we want to talk about the pros, the opportunities, and the problems of infinite banking and insurance, right? And especially from an entrepreneur perspective, if you're going to be creating policies, what what would you say are the pros of infinite banking and insurance? Um, so you said, what are the pros for entrepreneurs? So mm -hmm. I'll say it like this real quick. Um, in the industry, Life insurance is one of the most consistent um, industries to make money in. Uh, it's one of the best foundational industries to make money in that will lead you to the real estate to, and the reason why I say that is because when you when you come into the industry of insurance, by default, you learn about all the other industries, right? Real estate, investing, SEC, all, all that kind of stuff. So it's a great foundational place to start and then branch your way out entrepreneur-wise. Um, now, how can an entrepreneur utilize uh, infinite banking? One of the things that, that, as a matter of fact, you talked about this, your exit strategy. Coming into a business and looking at your business as a product and understanding having an exit strategy in place. Well, um, be, again, being associated with bees, I learned how if I buy this type of business, I know my multiples and how much I can sell it for in the future. I can create an infinite bank today that will anticipate me selling my business in five years. Now, based on that, what will happen is, see, and this is a huge difference compared to the IRAs and things of that nature. With the IRA, um, the max is, and when we have self-directed, I haven't looked at the self-directed uh, maximums lately, but last time I checked, it was like 50, 60,000, something like that. 60, but, yeah, so, but it's capped. So if I don't use it, I lose it, done. Mm -hmm. With infinite banking, I can customize it. So let's say I have a business and I should be able to sell it for $5 million down the line, right? I can customize my policy to where I can put in a million dollars a year for five years and be done. But as a business owner, here's what we know. I'm not gonna have the five million. I'm not, I might not have a million in the first year. Mm -hmm. I might just have 200,000. And mm -hmm. then I might have 200,000 next year. And then I might have 200,000 a year after that. I might only have 200,000 for all five years until I sell my business. So now if we say that 200,000 times five is a million bucks. So mm -hmm. now I sell my business. Uh, uh, well, let, let's do it like this. If I sold, if I put in 200,000, that means I have an $800,000 gap, gap that I didn't use. The biggest difference with infinite banking and traditional accounts is if I don't use that 800,000, it rolls into the next year. 
So mm. now the next year, I could put in 1.6 million because 800 plus 800. Yeah. And then it'll roll into the next year. I could put in, you get it? Oh, so, I now, don't think that. so now coming into the fifth year, if I didn't use all that money, uh, now I could put in $4 million, no questions asked. Because remember, the other thing is with infinite banking, everything is private. So they're not going to say, how did you get $4 million to put in? We designed it for this up, up front. Yeah. And they didn't require the payment up front. But now that I sold my business and I get all this cash, now I could dump $4 million in, no questions asked. It immediately earns interest and I can borrow against it right away if I want to go invest in another business. Ooh, ooh spicy talk again. Let's go. I love it. I love it, man. Okay, so so let's get to the next one, next part of pop. So we 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 went through pros, the yeah. opportunities, meaning new things are happening in the, you know current events in the world, whatever. Yep. What are the opportunities out there for an entrepreneur with insurance and infinite banking? And I hope you do mention something about what we uh, briefly discussed in terms of if you're acquiring businesses, what you could do with oh, uh, infinite banking as well. But absolutely. you tell me I what you, you think of the opportunity. I got you, brother. I got you. I got you. <laughs> So uh, one of the first things when it comes to opportunity is we're getting ready to approach another recession and they're talking about it's going to hit harder than any other recession we've came across, right? Mm -hmm. uh, since 2008, let me say that. Yeah. So a lot of, so there's two types of people when they get this information. One, they're panicking. The other one, they're preparing. How could you prepare for this type of, this type of uh, information? Well, if you were to have an infinite bank, now's the time to load up on cash. Because now, so let me give you an example of why you can stash all your money inside. So as a matter of fact, earlier this uh, earlier this month, the stock market went haywire. It mm -hmm. dropped. So we had. So I even told my wife, I said, "Hey, go get a lump sum of cash and let's put it in our banks real quick." And the reason why is because you put in. Let's say you put in a hundred grand, and the market takes a tank like it did earlier this uh, this month. Mm -hmm. Well, your cash is going to stay there. But then when the market gets ready to rebound, your account's going to reset at the bottom where the market went. And then mm. on its climb up, you take all those gains home. That mm. means right now there's an opportunity for you to make 60, 70, 80% because we work with companies that will give you no cap on the earnings. Oh, oh man. So, okay. so right now with that market, so when the recession gets ready to hit, you're going to load up on the cash. It's kind of similar to, to dollar cost averaging where you're constantly investing. And so yeah. whether the market's down or up, you're just buying more of the same asset when the, when the market's down. It's similar to that, but you're going to load up even more when the market's down because you're trying to take a bigger share, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And then when that market rebounds, it's going to pop back up. And now if it does 60, 70, 80% return, you take all of it home at no additional cost to you. So now you never lost when it dropped and you take it all back when it comes home. But see, if you're not aware of the opportunity of the market falling out like this, then you would even know to prepare for it. You know what I mean? Um, so that's the first opportunity I would say. The second opportunity is when, 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 the, when we get ready to go into a recession, that means businesses are going to go for sale. Yeah. Right. And they're going to go for sale for real cheap. Now, one of the things that can happen is when you come in and you buy a business, the first thing, this is why I say we got to, we got to uh, think like we're the bank. We're no longer thinking as if we are customers of the bank. Cause mm -hmm. see, I was thinking, I, I'm telling people think like the bank and I messed up with my, my, with my boy B's here where he told me to buy a business. I was like, shoot, I try to get another job. <laughs> I was thinking like the customer, uh... but what the banks do is exactly what he talked about. They invest in the business and they hold those investments and then they decide to get rid of it later and cash in or they hold it through the, ter the term. So now with that being said, what we could do is we could go out there and buy other businesses, but here's the key. When we buy a business, you could you also inherit the employees. And if you inherit the employees, they're already working in the business. They already do what they do. Well, guess what you could do? You could offer incentives up to them to have them stay with you. What kind of incentives could you offer? You can get them all infinite banks for the executive suites. And all the money that you pay to the executives is a tax write-off for your company because it's called an executive bonus plan. Now, when that happens, that means you're saving money for your business, but you're incentivizing your, your uh, leadership team to stay and you can create a vesting period. So now you say, hey, I know we're getting ready to go into a recession, but I'm gonna give you this extra money, but that means you've got to stay with me for three to five years in mm -hmm. order to receive it. 
if you don't stay with three, I, I keep the money. Just that simple, right? Yeah, yeah, now, the it. reason why this is important is because in contrast, if I was to just open up a regular 401k plan, whatever I do for my executives, I have to do for everybody else. It's gonna bleed your business. Now you're now because see when you open up a 401k plan, you open up to uh, tax audits with the IRS. You open up to uh, third party administration fees and all that kind of stuff. So these are things you open yourself up to, which means it's going to cost you a lot of money, especially if you're a small business, right? Mm -hmm. With an infinite bank, it doesn't fall under the ERISA plan, so you could customize it for one employee at a time. In other words, whatever I do for you, I don't have to do for everybody else. So I'm like, oh, okay, here we go. Yep. Now we we thinking on a different playing field, right? So 100%. yeah, 100%. I love it. I love it. And 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 before you go on to problems, um, what about? Uh, I saw we had a question that came in about age. You know, just like when you're setting up any any insurance plan, you know, sometimes the higher uh, the older the person is, the higher the premiums are, or something like that. Is there anything that we have to uh, take into account when it comes to infinite banking and uh, age and health of the person? Great question. Typically speaking, traditionally, uh, traditionally speaking, that is true. Mm -hmm. When it comes to infinite banking, that's not the case. And let me tell you why. Mm -hmm. Um, usually the formula is age, cost of, uh, uh, um, is age, premium, and then death benefit. Mm -hmm. Based on your age, we're looking to buy the same amount of death benefit. Therefore, it affects our cost. Does, mm -hmm. that, does that make sense? Or it affects our premium. Okay. 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 Got you. Okay. Cause, and that's because we're all trying to, so you and I, so let's say if you're older than me, if you're 10 years my senior, and I, I'm not saying you are, just an example for everybody <laughs> to see, right? If you're 10 years my senior, then uh, if you and I are looking to purchase a half million dollars, then our premium is going to reflect that difference, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're both applying for a half million dollars. But if you and I are coming in at $100,000 to put into our infinite bank, then the cost doesn't affect us the same because now the death benefit is going to be adjusted to fit a hundred thousand to my age and a hundred thousand to your age. Therefore, the cost of insurance balances out. Okay. Okay. Very okay. interesting. So, Damn. so, so in that sense, it it, it, it doesn't apply because we're trying to come in with large sums of cash with the least amount of death benefit possible. So it'll balance itself out. So you won't have to worry about it. Ooh, yeah, this is a whole course today. <laughs> I'm learning a lot. There we go. Okay, okay. So now we got to get to. I think what's the most the most important part is the problems, right? What so, are the things that people need to look out for? So when it comes to problems, uh, what's happening is infinite banking is becoming popular, and and but it's becoming popular as a catchphrase. And the reason why I say that is because unfortunately. Over 80 to 85% of agents in the industry do not know how to set up a policy properly. So one of the things that you got to look out for is you got to look out for somebody who can actually answer the proper questions so that so that you know that they can set up your policy correctly. Or I can make it easy for you. Just holler at me and my team and we got you. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. that's the easiest way to go. <laughs> <laughs> but but and realistically speaking, I know that everybody ain't going to come to me. So the main thing is you got to make sure that you're speaking to an agent correctly because uh, if not here's what can happen you could open up your policy for a hundred grand so you can say you're going to put in a hundred grand but if the agent sets it up improperly the agent will get paid on a hundred grand and you eat up the cost um, now you don't get the chance to benefit from it you can't borrow from it so you might have heard people say oh well infinite banking doesn't work because you got to wait five ten years for the policy to benefit well that's because the agent screwed them over if i'm just being blunt Right. Wow. If you if you have to wait that long for infinite banking to work for you and you're at, let me rephrase that. If you have to wait that long for infinite banking to work for you and you're putting in a sizable amount, that means the agent is making a commission. Right. Mm -hmm. So even though infinite banking is great, like anything else, you got to make sure you do your study so you know what's going on. So you don't get ripped off because there's going to be people that's going to take advantage of that. There's going to be agents that take advantage of that. That's just that goes with anything, just like real estate, just like credit, whatever the case may be. The other thing is, um, uh, the other problem is the the one thing you have to be clear about is infinite banking is a concept, not a product, which also means it's not an investment. You just have the ability to use it as an investment strategy. The reason why that's important for you to understand is because 
being that it has life insurance, you have to pay a premium. Being that you have to pay a premium, um, if we set up correctly, you could bypass a couple of uh, years or a couple of months. But in the first year, you got to make sure you can meet that. You got to make sure you can meet that demand that you created a contract for. Because if not, your policy can uh, your policy can lapse, just like a regular insurance policy, and that means you can also lose your money. That is something you want to make sure you're aware of. Um, and then the last problem I would mention is you do have to qualify for it. So they're not just going to hand it to you. You got to qualify yeah. for it, and that's based off your age and your health, right? Um, uh, so. So, yeah, I, I would say those are the main problems that you need to look out for. Um, number one, it is insurance. So we got to make sure that we will. You got to qualify for it. Number two, because it's insurance, we got to make sure that you're funding it properly. So in other words, we got to take a look at your finances, see what you got, see what you can do. And we design around that accordingly. And then number three, like we talked about somebody structuring it so you don't get ripped off. OK, OK. And, and one last question towards that. What would you say is. Uh, a quick uh, and uh, you gave one when you said that if you're putting in a sizable amount and you have to wait a certain uh, you know how however long before you, it can actually benefit you but what's another red flag that you could that you, somebody would be able to recognize and say oh wait a minute i don't know if this agent really knows what they're doing with re related to uh, infinite banking like what should somebody what's a, a marker that somebody would see and then say hey maybe i need to check out hassan Great question. Uh, one of the things I would ask him is, is um, I would tell him to ask how much, how much um, I would tell him to ask the agent about the tax loss, ask the agent about the tax loss, because if they know the tax laws, then that means they know how to structure it to make sure you get the biggest benefit. What are the tax laws that I need to be aware of so that I can create the biggest plan that's a benefit for me? That's tax laws. L-A-W-S. Yeah. yeah, tax laws. L-A-W-S. And so if the agent's aware of the tax laws that's put in place, then they're going to be familiar with what you need to do to make sure that uh, you can create the biggest policy possible and make sure you don't uh, uh, break the tax laws so it can stay tax free. Oh, that's another problem. So if being that it's a tax insurance or being that it's an insurance policy, let's say that 10 years from now, you have five million dollars in the account and you want to take out all the five million and you want to shut down the account that's that's foolish in my opinion but you don't want to do that if you do that you no longer have the insurance sheltering your funds to make it all tax free if you do that the irs has a right to come up to you say where did you get this five million from and you can say oh i got it from my insurance policy the fact that it's shut down they have the right to tax you on all that five million and retro tax you for all those years that you had it. so okay. so that's so you don't want to get it now and then shut it down later i that that's breaking the tax laws right mm -hmm. um and so if an agent doesn't know the tax law, they'll be like what are you talking about right you don't want them if they don't know what a mech is you don't want them mech? right yeah mec modified endowment contract if they don't know what that is and how to create a plan around that you don't want them you okay. don't want them there we go and, and and the last thing i'll say to that is i created a free do-it-yourself infinite bank audit guide in that in that guide it teaches you the vocabulary and what to say where you can call the insurance company and ask what kind of plan you currently have and that also tells you how to communicate to the agent if they don't know what a guideline single premium is if they don't know what seven pay is or the maximum you can put into the policy then then you don't need to work with them you don't need to work with them but these are simple vocabulary words that they should know okay okay and we'll wrap up with this last question but um could someone utilize the establishment of an infinite bank to funnel in an inheritance earning to avoid higher amounts of taxation um in general the answer to that would be no because usually when you're putting money inside of an infinite bank it's with after-tax dollars right hmm. now the only way that will work is is if your inheritance is being funneled through a trust and because of being funneled through a trust it's essentially tax-free then from there you can put inside your infinite bank now now it's going in tax-free it's growing tax-free and you can still pull it out tax-free tax -free. that's yeah. that's that's the baddest plan in the land there and so go. so so when you want to talk about protection and all that kind of stuff that's the ultimate protection combining your infinite bank with the trust with a trust oh okay okay 
Asani, bro, this and and I've spoken to you so many times about these things, but every single time I'm like, oh man, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so I love it, I love it, man. But tell the people where they can find you. Yes, yes. So um, you guys can find me on Instagram. That's the that's the place I'm most active at HZ Houston Twelve. Um, we're starting a YouTube channel. We're start uh, it was spend the same dollar twice, and um, uh, you can also find us on TikTok, Facebook. Uh, but and it's basically the same code HZ Houston Twelve or Hassani Houston. So that's HZ, the best place to find me. Yep, HZ Houston Twelve. There we yep. go on all platforms basically, and we'll yep. drop that definitely in the in the uh, caption below. But uh, Asani, it's been a pleasure, man. That was a great uh, insight into infinite banking. You helped us to expose the insurance industry today. And yes, as always, bro, it's a pleasure having any conversation with you, man. Now, whenever, whenever I have a guest on, I have to ask them two questions before we wrap up. One, are you gonna buy businesses? Absolutely. All right. <laughs> I, I, I'm more in the works of it. Absolutely. There we go. And you're, you're part of the BBI, the uh, you know my Business Builders Institute, uh, where we teach how to acquire businesses for no money out of your pocket already. Anyway, so I know you're gonna do it. So yes, uh, yes, I have yes. To ask that. But the second question, I plan on creating a trillion dollar table by the end of this decade. I want to sit in a room at a table with other uh, entrepreneurs, especially. The, the average person, people that look like us and such, where we have a trillion dollars assets under management, AUM, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you have a trillion dollars in your pocket, but our combined right. assets that we manage, the businesses, the real estate, our insurance policies, everything combined up to a trillion dollars. Will you be a part of this table? I have no problem with it, brother. That's powerful. You make me think, okay, uh, what, what what kind of impact would we make with a trillion? That, that's 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 a big number. There we go. I, and, and, I don't think people realize how big a trillion dollars really is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, but more importantly, I don't think people believe how attainable this challenge really is. Because when it's they attainable. hear that, they, they hear, oh, trillion dollars, that's, that's crazy. No, it's not. We could make no, it happen not. with these type of uh, uh, strategies that we're discussing right now. Absolutely, without a doubt. It, uh, um, uh, because you put a plan together how people could get, become a billionaire within yes, less than five years. Yes, so sir. if you do that and then you, do, man. So anyways, to answer your question, yes. Yes, you can. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yes, I could be a part of it. I would love to be a part of it. And yes, that is more than attainable because in a short amount of time, we're going to get access to people that are worth $100 billion. Um, uh, just We're seeing that now where that's becoming the norm. Yeah. Yep. Where the top, where the top people that's being worth something. So when they push up to a trillion in net worth, we're gonna have more people, at, at more people accessible that mm -hmm. are gonna be worth ten billion dollars, uh, fifty billion dollars, a hundred billion dollars. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's more than possible, brother. Absolutely. There we go. There we go. Love to hear it. So we coming back to this episode in, at the end of this year, at the end of this decade, which is uh, what eight years away, and we're gonna yes, be right. like, "Yep, Hassani said it." That he will yes. be part of the table, and he is, he's going to be there. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Do you mind if I recap one thing before we go out? Sure. I just want to make sure y'all understand something. When we talk about the power of infinite banking, y'all, we're talking about three things. Leverage, control, and peace of mind. Mm. Leverage, control, and peace of mind. If you're an entrepreneur, you have 100 grand, you borrow 30 that drops to 70. But with infinite banking, you borrow 30, that still is $100,000. So, and, and if people say, well, man, that's crazy because that's still a loan. Yes, you're gonna have that 30,000 at 5% interest, but but you control if and when you wanna pay that money back, y'all. Mm. You control it. And we know as entrepreneurs, sometimes folks don't, things don't go on our, on our, our, our schedule, yeah. but we'll get to it eventually. You have the ability to choose that timeline as an entrepreneur uh, because you're in control of when you pay that money back, right? Mm -hmm. And then we already talked about the leverage and then the peace of mind is if you pay it back, you make more money. If you don't, they take the difference from your death benefit anyways, so you're not required. Mm -hmm. That's what you wanna remember. So y'all need to click that link down below and make sure you get that class where we talked about that in more detail. 
B's got that situated for y'all. Uh, but I want to make sure I remind you guys of the power of what we're talking about when we're doing things like this. Yes, sir. Let's go, bro. Hey, man, it was a pleasure and an honor having you on here. Uh, always great conversation. Thank yes, you, my bro. brother. And let's get building, buying, and getting to that trillion dollar table. Yes, sir. I'm Thank with you it. everybody for another episode of Entrepreneurship Exposed. I'll see y'all next week.